morning. Welcome to Arden Road Baptist Church. If you'll join me in standing, we'll begin our evening service. I'll start with some scripture reading out of Isaiah, chapter number 25 and verse 1 says, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thy, thou hast, thou, this little text is coming out, I guess, only well, a minute or two months, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. I'm thankful that we have that promise from God's word. Let's join together in prayer, and then we'll begin with some singing. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the time that you've allowed us to be in your house already this morning. As we gather tonight, I pray that you'd be praised as we lift up your name in song, and that you'd speak to each and every one of our hearts through the preaching of your word. We look forward to see what you have for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing Blessed Be the Name, hymn 52. Blessed be the name. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Sing it out. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, the name that charms our fears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tis music in the sinner's ears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. He breaks the power of canceled sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His blood can make the vow. Blessed be the name of the Lord, sing it out now. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hymn 140, great is the Lord, he is holy and just, sing that out. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just, by His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true, by His mercy He proves His love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory, great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice.
by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice, great are you, Lord, great are you, Lord. Amen. Let's sing, Christ is all. I've found a treasure that can't be taken. This new hymn that we've been working on on Sunday night, sing it out with me. I found a treasure that can't be taken, found a well that won't run dry. Oh, worldly pleasure, be now forsaken. Behold what love, what life is mine. Could in the striving now make me righteous. Missions update from last week, $7,173.27 was given, bringing our new total to date to $295,517.27. It's a blessing, amen? This time, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to continue to bless the service, and we'll have a special, and then Brother McCracken is going to come. So let's pray. Dear Father, we're so grateful that we can gather together with your people once again. We're thankful for the services we had this morning and your word that was preached, dear Lord. I pray you just continue to bless the Lord. Help our road church, Baptist church continue to be faithful, dear Lord, to give, to further the gospel, dear Lord, around the world. And, and then help us to be faithful here at home, to be a witness and a testimony. I pray you just bless the service, dear Lord, that every aspect would be honoring and glorifying to you, dear Lord. And that you just uh, use Brother McCracken once again, dear Lord. Use your word to touch our hearts. Help us to be more like you. We'll give you the honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs 
Wow, that's awesome. Felt like I was at Branson, Missouri there for a bit, man. That was incredible. I don't know if they're called the Jones Tees or the Or Or Jones or the Jones Teasy Jones or anyway, it was awesome. Thank you very, very much. I uh, I wish people let me sing with them. And they made me sound like that. It was incredible. Hey, uh, Nancy and I uh, enjoyed uh, being here today. Thankful that Pastor Denson would give us privilege and opportunity. And then uh, your kindnesses, and uh, it's a blessing. Thank you for, uh, it's just, anyway, uh, I grew up in Kentucky, and there's friendly folk there. And uh, I went to college in Missouri, I've now lived in Oklahoma since uh, 1978. But there is something that is real and it's true about Texas hospitality and kindness. My wife is from Texas. She grew up in the Garland area and I have told her on more than one occasion, I said, if you kick the bucket, I'm going back to Texas and get another one. <laughs> I am grateful for the kindness and hospitality and people that move here. And I know you guys are being somewhat bombarded with people from uh, other states. But anyway, uh, 
I hope that. Anyway. Amen. It's a blessing that they're, I hope they'll learn how to do it like you guys. Amen. So it's a blessing. Anyway, uh, thankful to be here. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't know, last night, we're only here like Saturday night, Sunday night, we're leaving, and then uh, Brother Jones says, we have a little gift basket for you, and oh, well, okay, whatever. Anyway, he's got this thing like this big, and it took almost two people to carry it, and I'm thinking, I guess in case Holocaust comes, we got to... <laughs> For protected. I, it was awesome. I love it. Uh, I haven't even got to the bottom of it yet. I'm looking forward to seeing what's all in there. But anyway, it's a blessing. I just love it that people appreciate God's servants and they uh, show kindness to them. And I'm humbled by it and grateful. So I'm looking forward to what we're going to do tonight. Luke 15, don't stand yet. I'm going to have you stand in a moment. But <clears throat> There's a fellow that uh, was uh, a professor at Heartland Baptist Bible College named Mike Thomas. They called him Coach. If you had any of your kids or any of their, uh, they would have got to know Coach uh, some years ago when it first came. Anyway, Coach became very good friends with Nancy and I, his wife, Miss Sue. Miss Sue was in a horrible car crash in May of 1988 just severe brain damage and so on. Mike and Sue never had children. Well, in July of 1988, my wife was in a car crash and had severe brain damage and they had very, very like uh, recovery and so on and injury. And so people would ask me, do you know Mike Thomas? No, I've never heard of him. Well then, Pacific Coast moved to Oklahoma City, and we got to know Mike and Sue Thomas, and we became great friends. His wife and he would come to our Thanksgiving dinner at the McCracken household, and I've got a few brothers and sisters, and so a normal Thanksgiving, there's somewhere around 120 to 130 people there. And so Mike and Sue, because... Brother Sam Davison just told people, if you don't have any place to go, go to the McCrackens. They don't know who's there anyway. Just go there. And uh, anyway, so Mike Thomas had this ability. I've never heard anybody else do it. You may be aware of it. I was not. But he would say he could do the prodigal son in the key of F just by memory. And so when this sermon came to being, I have... uh, printed the prodigal son in the key of F. I didn't memorize it, and I'm not going to memorize it. But I am going to try to read it to you. Prodigal son in the key of F. <clears throat> Feeling footless and frisky, a feathered-brained fellow forced his fond father to fork over the family finances. He flew far to foreign fields and frittered his fortune, feasting fabulously with faithless friends. Finally, facing famine and fleeced by his fellows in folly, he found himself a feed flinger in a filthy farmyard. Fairly famished, he fain would have filled his frame with the forage fragments left by the filthy farmyard creatures. Phooey, my father's flunkies, far, far finer. I'm sorry. Phooey, my father's flunkies, fair, far finer. The frazzled fugitive said, frankly facing facts, frustrated by failure and filled with foreboding, he forthwith fled to his family. Falling at his father's feet, he floundered forlornly. Father, I flunked and fruitlessly forfeited family favor. But the faithful father, forestalling further flinching, frantically flagged the flunkies, fetch forth the finest flatling and fix a feast. But the fugitive's fault-finding freighter Frowned on the fickled forgiveness of the former folderer. His fury flashed, but fussing was futile. For the far-sighted father figured, such filial fidelity is fine, but what forbids fervent festivity? The fugitive is found. Unfurl the flags with fanfares flaring. Let fun and frolic freely flow. Former failure is forgotten. Folly is forsaken, and forgiveness forms a foundation for future fortitude. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> That's pretty wild, isn't it? I did read this one time out loud 
at a church that has uh, sign language. <laughs> that was quite comical. <laughs> but anyway, Prodigal and the Key of F. So if you'd like a copy of this, well, get your own. Okay. <laughs> Proverbs, I mean, uh, Luke 15. If you're able, please stand with me, please. I meant to mention this while I was, before I started talking about Coach Thomas. So there's a church member here named Richard Nelson. There's probably hardly anybody in the room knows who he is because he's very quiet and kind of a church mouse type fella. He doesn't talk to anybody hardly. But anyway, I met Richard Nelson in 1978, the year I graduated from college, and I was his kid's youth director in Oklahoma City. And uh, I uh, moved away from... Uh, the church there in uh, 1984. And so I may have seen uh, Brother Nelson once since then. I'm not altogether sure. But when he came up beside me after church this morning and I hadn't seen him in a long time, wasn't thinking about him, and he goes, First Bible Baptist Church, 29th. And I said, Ed McKinley. And I'm looking at him and I just thought he was some old crazy man. <laughs> but anyway, then I started looking at him and I went, and he said it before I said it. He said, Nelson. I said, yes. And so I hugged him and kissed him. He hadn't been kissed that much. I kissed him several times. And, but anyway, that was just a joy to my soul to see that he's here with you folks and that uh, someone has to look after him. So God bless you. God bless you. Luke 15, let's start again with verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man received the sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Verse number 8, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she called her friends and neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I had lost. Verse 11, a certain man had two sons, the younger of them, said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. Verse 13, and not many days hence, not many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to feed swine. He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough in despair? I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and no more worthy to be called thy son. And the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said, thy brother is come. And thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. 
And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou hast never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meat that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. That's awesome, isn't it? Aren't you glad Jesus gave that parable? Let's pray. I want to pray and let's see what God has to say to our hearts tonight. Our great God, I just want to say again, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for loving me, for loving us, for proving that you love us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for opportunity that we have in, in this country. We, we love America. And we are grateful for what you've done for America. And we're grateful that we still have liberty and freedom to do what we're doing this very moment. Thank you. Would you bless tonight? Would you speak to us? I sure need help. But would you help me get across truth? Be able to communicate it where it makes sense to us. And then God, where... It's obvious, no matter who the speaker is, you can empower it and use it to speak to hearts. And would you do that tonight? Would you speak to us? I pray we'd be willing to hear it. Then we would be willing to do whatever you ask of us. So if there's any that are not saved, I thank you that you're giving them another opportunity. I pray they will say yes to you before it's too late. So, Lord, thank you again for what you do for us and how you love us. Thank you for what you're about to do right now. And Jesus, can't wait to see you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So the parables, I call them the pictures, come into existence because of the attitude, the behavior of the religious elite, the scribes and the Pharisees. And so Jesus is giving them these three pictures. And I want to show you something in verse 7 that I think is apt. He says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. If you'll just pay attention to who he's talking to, the scribes and the Pharisees, when Jesus says over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance... The scribes and Pharisees could look at that and actually go, uh-huh, at least he knows who we are. And they look at it and that it's about them. And the truth is, it is about them. This is how they were supposed to receive it, as if they don't need any repentance. So here's what I will say about the three paintings, the three pictures, they also, they are, especially this part about the older son, the elder son, it's a mirror. Jesus is holding up a mirror in front of the religious elite, and he wants them to vividly see and the elder son is in full view of what Jesus is trying to get across to these scribes, Pharisees. Verse 25, the son, it says, uh, now the elder son was in the field. He's been working. He's busy. He's out doing his responsibility, his portion. He lives there on his father's ranch, the father's farm, and it's not his own private business. He's still there, and uh, he's supposedly a committed worker. And then verse 25b, at the end of it, says he heard music and dancing. What is this about? Why would, what's all this music and dancing going on? Joseph Parker is a, a theologian that he was 
written some commentary and so on. And I like how he said this. He says, uh, it is a poor joy that does not overflow the parlor and get down into the kitchen. <laughs> I love it. The whole place is rejoicing and having a party. It's wonderful. And the brother's walking up and he hears it and he's going, what is this about? What is going on? And the fellow tells him, the servant says, well, your brother is back and your father's rejoicing. He's received safe and sound. Now watch, this elder brother, we're getting ready to see his character, his heart, his attitude. He's, he's mad about it. Why would, it, why, why would he be mad that baby brother is okie dokie, brother, he's home? Why would he be mad about this? Well, there's several threads that we can pull and try to calculate this. But it's obvious that one of them, and the major one, is self-righteousness. Maybe you don't know what self-righteousness is. He thinks he's awesome. He's done everything right. Now, let me tell you where self-righteousness comes from. It boils up and comes from something called pride. And so the older brother is actually filled with pride. Wait a minute, wait a minute. i got to reverse this. What causes the younger brother to leave? Uh, pride. Remember, he wants to get out on his own, get away from authority. But now we got the older brother. He's got pride. Verse 29, he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress. I, I come at any time. So he's acting like he's never done anything wrong. I'm good, and you know I'm good. And it's like he doesn't, appreciate what his father's done for him. He's not grateful for this. He's full of pride and selfishness and self-righteousness that his brother leaves home and he's out of the picture and he stays home and he's acting as if his father is being an unjust master. I'm your slave. I'm your servant. Look what I've done for you. Mercy. His pride uh, shows up. Well, I mean, I got to, I, I told you I was flipping that back. Now I'm going to flip it back over here again. Pride is what caused the younger brother to leave, but pride also causes what the elder brother's attitude is. Is everybody with me? I've been awesome. I've been great for you all this time. And so his pride and self righteousness is showing up. I've been submissive. I've always done what you want me to do. But he's ungratefully complaining. Watch what he does in 29 again, verse 29. Yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. You never did. I don't know if you, I, don't, I think some of you would know the fatted calf. That's not the regular calf. There's a fat one that they've been feeding and protecting, and someday we're going to eat that baby. It's going to be great, but we're saving it for something special. And crybaby older brother, you never gave me a kid where I could make merry with my friends. I don't know if you're getting this, but Jesus is talking to the scribes and Pharisees as how they picture themselves. We're serving. We're doing everything right. You're not giving us attention. You're giving it to these publicans and sinners. This is something that's kind of obvious. Watch verse 30. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots. Excuse me? But the, 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 Number one, he doesn't say, my brother. 
Number two, he says, devour thy living with harlots. Now, how does Bubba know that? How does he know? Did he send somebody around and follow him around and give him information? He doesn't know. This is what, here's how I wrote it in my notes anyway. It's exaggerating the sin of his little brother. Maybe, maybe the little brother did what big brother is assuming. First of all, he doesn't know, and so he's exaggerating it. I don't know if you know this or not, but if you have children, more than one, you might know this. Often one child will exaggerate what the other child did, so this child won't look as like they're as bad. Or that they're better. Is everybody with me? So this is what the brother is doing and so on. But watch, if the older brother happens to be correct, maybe he did hang out with the harlots. Maybe, that's, maybe he did. Here's the truth of the matter. Even if it was true, the father still is willing to forgive him. Did you just hear it? No matter how wicked or how bad that we might measure it, the father is still willing to forgive him. I forgot to ask you to do this. That's where I got tangled up there. But if, if you have the ability, if you could put a marker where we are in Luke 15 and go to Proverbs 23, Proverbs 23 is in the middle of your Bible. I meant to have you put a marker there. Put the marker in Luke 15. We're going to come back in a little bit. Proverbs 23. Can you guys hear that? Do you hear it? It's awesome. That's a, a preacher that preaches the Bible. That's one of his favorite sounds. If he, if he doesn't preach the Bible, he, he doesn't care. But a preacher that preaches the Bible and the congregation is flipping these onion skin papers. They're, they're flipping the pages. A preacher's going, yes, they got their Bibles. This is good. I know, I, I, I know that some people use a, a tablet, their phone. And I don't know if I'm against it. My mama was, but I don't know that I am. I'll tell you why my mama was. You do all kinds of other stuff in that little phone. I don't think it ought to be the word of God too. Okay, mom, whatever you say, I'm for you. I'm on your team. But anyway, I don't think I'm against it. But here's what I want you to do. If you're going to use your pad or phone or whatever, invent the app that makes that noise. <laughs> Proverbs 23, look at it, verse 17. Why am I having trouble with this? There it is, verse 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Excuse me. Wait, no, 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 no. Why would believers, God followers, what is it, envy sinners? We would be envious of them? Why would he say that? Verse 18. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Uh, verse 17 through 19. Hear thou, my son, and be wise and guide. I'm, I'm at the wrong verses, folks. I'm sorry. Verse 17 and 18. I'm reading... I'm, I'm sorry, but let's do 17 again. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there's an end, and, thy, and thine ex expectation not be cut off. All right, the sinners that we might be envious of, there will be a future. There is an end to that. Amen? There's going to be a conclusion. Now, here's where I was confused here. Go back to, uh, in front of Proverbs of Psalms 73. I want to show you this. That's where my confusion was. Psalm 73. Wait, why am I bringing this up? The older brother is envious and jealous of his baby brother. 
the center boy. Watch uh, Psalm 73, verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Excuse me? The ungodly are doing that? That doesn't doesn't seem right. Watch verse 13. The psalmist says, Verily, I have cleansed my heart. I've gotten right with God in vain. And I washed my hands in innocency. I got right with God. I've been trying to live right. I've been doing right. And it seems like it's useless. What good did it do me? They're getting rich. I'm not. It's even worse than that. Look at the next verse, verse 14. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. The word plagued, I'll let Strong help me with that. Strong says to beat, to strike, to cast down, to be defeated. The psalmist says every day it's like I'm cast down, I'm beat up. And then the word chastened. It uses the word Strong's again, says it's rebuked, reproved, correction. It seems like I want to serve God. I'm clean in my heart. I'm right with him. I'm trying to do good. And ah, look, they're getting wealthy. I'm beat up every day, it seems like. You see why some believers might get envious? Be wondering about that? So here we go. Uh, verse 16 no I'm sorry verse 15 if I say I will speak thus behold I should offend against the generation of thy children excuse me stop stop if I speak thus what does he mean if I tell people look look what they're getting in look what I'm getting he said if I say that out loud in verse 15 he said I'm going to offend Your children, those who follow you, who love you. It's the wrong thing to say to them. So, verse 16, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then, hallelujah, verse 17 shows up. Until until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Somebody say amen. Verse 19, how they are brought into desolation and in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a consequence, an end to their wickedness. It is not in vain to serve him and to keep your heart cleansed before him. It's not the wrong thing. The enemy will bother us. The world will bother us. They're not for us. You might feel beaten down. You might be feel reproved every day. But one day, it's going to happen. There is an end. Somebody say amen. Absolutely. Now go with me to the book of Matthew. Back yonder, your ribbons at Luke. You're almost there if you want to do that. Matthew 18. I'm talking, I'm, I'm trying to get across to you this older brother's attitude about the wicked, the sinful. I could, you could say it like this maybe publicans and sinners. That he's so much better than they are. And if you become envious of them, watch what happens in verse 23. I'm going to read it fairly quickly. It's about 10 verses or so. I just want to read it to you though. Verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Stop right there. 10,000 talents, it, it means... If you live two lifetimes, you still couldn't pay them back. That's what it means. All right, here we go. Verse number 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him, be sold. And his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. He said, at least I'm going to get some of my money back. Then he goes in verse 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him. Say, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. That's impossible. He can't pay him all. But he's trying to express him how sorry he is. Verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. A hundred pence is a few weeks wages. 
he, said, he laid hands on him. What's this? And he took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Verse 29. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, besought him, saying, Have patience with me. I will pay thee all. And he would not. But he went and cast him into prison till, till, the debt, till he should pay the debt. Verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. Verse 32. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I have pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, tormentors until he should pay all that was due him. Watch verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Are you hearing this? The older brother feels like the younger brother has sinned against his dad, sinned against him, and he's wicked, he's useless, he's a waste of time. And then when the young boy repents and he comes back home, the older brother is bitter and he says, we ought not forgive him. Excuse me, I don't know if anybody knows this or not, but if you have a son that's around 30 years old, can you imagine that he's never one time, never one time, messed up in the family and that he's the perfect son he's the older son he's never ever done anything wrong do you think the parents are naive enough to think that he's never made a boo-boo but you know what the parents do they forgive they overlook sometimes they're full of mercy and compassion and he acts like he's never done anything wrong and he's jealous and bitter about those who are sinful. Why are they getting away with you? killed for them the fatted calf. Listen to what bitterness does. We're not going to turn there, but just listen to it out of Hebrews. It says it like this. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. So, wait, no, no, no. He's talking about if you're going through difficulties and things, God's grace is available to you. If you fail of the grace of God, you're rejecting his grace. He said, lest any man fail of the grace of God. And here's what it says next. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Whenever we don't receive God's grace that's made available to us, the, what occurs next, according to Hebrews 12, is that a root of bitterness springs up. And all it does is trouble you. If you have bitterness in your heart toward anybody about anything, the Bible says bitterness will trouble you. There's no way to get around it. The older brother, that's what his problem is. Now he's full of pride, self-righteousness, and bitterness. He doesn't recognize his brother to be his brother. In fact, he exaggerates his sin, perhaps. And then he doesn't recognize the brother's changed any at all. He hasn't changed. He's like he always was. Look at 29 and 30. He says, do I serve thee these many years? I'm some kind of slave to you? You've been unjust to me and how I've been towards you? One fellow said it like this. The younger confesses with no excuses. The elder boasts with no confession. Remember when he came home, what did the father do? He saw him a great way off and he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. Remember that? Some would say... Wait just a minute. He's still dirty. He hasn't got cleaned up yet. How do you know? How do you know he really means it? He could just be faking you out. He's just trying to get back into the big house. We got to put him on probation here. Is everybody hearing me? This is what the Pharisees are saying about Jesus with this unwashed crowd. They're saying, wait, wait, Jesus, they're dirty. You can't hang out with them. This prodigal's back. Wait till he at least gets get some new clothes on. He's filthy. He's got rags. Come on. Wait, let's just see how he does and see if he really means it. What does the father say? 
about all this murmuring in the background, all this complaint. The father says, my son is back. He was dead. Now he's alive. Let me get my arms around him. I want to hug him. I want to kiss him. I don't want to let him go. He's back. Somebody ought to say amen. Glory to God he came back. Hallelujah. Oh, honey. Remember the father represents God? Do you think the father recognizes uh, like faith? Repentance? Yeah. But see, isn't it maybe us religious elite? We can too. Just ask me. I'll tell you if they really mean it. No, I've been watching them. I got my eye on them. Is anybody hearing me? And we become enamored with ourself and what we do and how we're faithful. Lord have mercy. How faithful are we? Well, Sunday night at church, come on. We're pretty awesome, you know. Mercy sakes. Hmm. I don't know if you were paying attention as I read. I didn't make an issue of it yet. I'm getting ready to. And back in Luke, where your marker is. The end of verse number four. 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost. See what the Bible says? Until he find it. Wow. The end of verse number eight. She'll seek diligently till she find it. How long are we supposed to be willing to look? Well, it depends on how much you care. It depends on how your burden is. Until he find it. You know that all of heaven did not rejoice. All of heaven did not shout. When Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. No, all of heaven did not shout when America declared her independence on July 4th, 1776. All of heaven did not stand and shout when Abraham Lincoln emancipated the slaves in January of 1863. And I'll just go ahead and say it. All of heaven did not shout when the Cowboys won the Super Bowl, whenever that was. <laughs> but all of heaven did shout on October 17th, 1963, when just a boy walked down the aisle at Grace Baptist Church in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and received Christ as his Savior. Heaven shouted over one sinner that got saved. Hallelujah. Bless his name. The father is saying, this is my son. He was gone. He was lost. He's dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. And heaven rings the bells. Praise his name. Glory to God. I'm so thankful for God's goodness to us. The older brother. So I want you to think about the older brother now. There's some things he needs to do. Here's one he needs to come to himself. He needs to understand where he is. Recognize his condition. Recognize that he is out of step with his father. His father's love is real. His father's love is enough but the older son does not recognize that. The older son, the older brother, he should feel dirty because he is. He should feel guilty because he is. He should feel shameful. He should feel broken. He should feel unworthy. Why? Because he really is. 
The older brother needs to realize his father's heart is big enough for everyone. His father's goodness is enough for everyone. His father's kindness, his father's forgiveness, his father's wings are big enough for everyone, not just some. The older brother should become, he should be coming to the end of himself. He should be humbling himself. He should come to the end of his own ideas, the end of his own ways. He needs to get to the place where he's willing to humble himself publicly. I don't know, anyway, I want to point it out to you. You know that the elder son did not go in the house? Do you want to see the patience, the mercy of the father? He did not send a servant and go out and say, tell him to get in here. The father went out himself. Isn't that something? The Bible says he entreated him. Strong's would tell us entreat means that he's begging, he's begging, he's begging the one that's supposed to love him, that honors him, that works for him, that's a willing part of the family. He's begging him, come, come, you need to come in here. Because he's so out of step with his father. He needs to be willing to confess his sin. Realizing that his sin is not just against those on earth. It's against the Father of heaven too. He needs to get to the place where he's so humble that it doesn't matter who sees his brokenness. It doesn't matter what others say or think. The older son needs to do the very same as the younger. I don't know if you're getting this or not. But both of them are filled with pride. Both of them want their own way. And both of them are a a front. Both of them are sin toward heaven. These scribes and Pharisees and their attitude and their heart is just as wicked. And I don't mean to belittle it, but it's just as wicked as hanging out with harlots. Oh, no, we're better than them. We're self-righteous, man. We're awesome. Uh, I don't think we're better than them if our heart's full of pride and self-righteousness and we're out of step with the Father and we are not willing to humble ourselves before God and we don't want anybody else to know it. God, forgive us. I know that you guys know that I'm a traveling evangelist. This is what I do. I go from church to church, week to week, And generally, I preach revivals. I'm trying to help people get back in right relationship with God. And I am not being tacky, I don't think. I'm not trying to be just judgmental. But I'm just telling you, I I only go to these kind of churches... I call them independent, fundamental, God-fearing, devil-hating, Bible-believing Baptist churches. That's the only kind I go to. But I'm telling you, in our churches, it sure seems like humility is lacking. True repentance is lacking. That we basically think, I, I don't know what more he wants. I'm actually, I might, I'm really... I'm like an awesome Christian. I'm dedicated. I'm committed. You know, we're so dedicated and so committed that we don't want to get dirty with those publicans and sinners out there. We couldn't do that. I don't, I, we, we don't want to go overboard on that. Is anybody hearing me? God help us. That we don't get the heart of the scribes and Pharisees and the older brother. God help us to be willing to look in the mirror. 
today, this afternoon, I was reading, actually finished the book of Matthew. And when Jesus said, one of you are going to deny me, I thought it was reminded today that, you know, all of the apostles says, is it I, Lord? You know why? Because we all have the ability to be the one. (laughs) And our servitude gets in the way and our dedication gets in the way. Do we really have the heart of God? Do we have the heart of the Father? Are we burdened enough to pass out a track? Are we going to maintain our position? Well, I'm just telling you, I, they need to get right, but I don't, someone's got, I, I, I can't go out there and get dirty with them. I don't want to do that. And all we're doing is to pass out a track or be burdened for someone where they, you feel like I'm the one that needs to go speak to them. And we all back away from that going, please don't make me do that. Please don't make me do that. And that's the whole thing Jesus is talking about. If you realize it's lost and you can do something about it, don't you care? Is there no burden? We're willing to come back to God saying, God, forgive me. I don't deserve to be in the big house. I don't deserve any of your forgiveness. I'm unworthy. But I want to accept and acknowledge your heart and I want my heart to be like your heart I ask you to stand with me thank you for listening I'd like to pray with you our great God I come to you again I thank you for privilege again to preach and to preach in front of people that know you that interested in your word, that love your word. God, I just know that all of us are candidates, not on purpose, but we're candidates to get out of step with your heart. I'm just grateful that you put up with us. I ask you, please, Continue to be merciful toward us. Continue to extend your grace to us. And I pray that we'll have a desire to get in step with your heart. And we'll be burdened for those around us. Thank you that you're inviting every one of us, older brother, younger brother, you're inviting us all to come back to you where we belong. Thank you. Our heads are bowed and Brother Jones is going to begin the invitation. If you want to sing with him, you're welcome to. Maybe we just want to find a place to recommit ourselves to the heart of God.
cracking thank you thank you for the truth of it and thank you for the spirit in which you brought it um, easy to be applied to every one of us is it not you know it is uh, just thank you for that brother McCracken. If, if you and your wife want to go out there and if you want to if you wouldn't mind meeting some more folks and and uh, uh, y'all y'all put your are you leaving right afterwards okay so just a quick handshake or something on the way out um, but thank you all for coming. Uh, I forgot this morning to, to uh, make a, some wedding anniversary announcement. It's Robert and Debbie Jones, and it's their 29th year of being being uh, married together. And, and um, I think it was a good thing for both of them. You know, I've talked to them before, and they can, they still like each other after 29 years. Uh, so if you, you see them, holler at them. And then we had one church anniversary. Caleb Wade. Caleb Wade, six years ago, trusted the Lord as his Savior and joined us in Arden Road Baptist Church and is pray for, thankful for his faithfulness and his mom and dad making him be here. Uh, <laughs> Brother Jones is going to give us the rest of our announcements and you all be dismissed. All right. There's really nothing going on this week. So, you know, I hope everybody just has a relaxing week. We'll see you, Brother Gary. We, oh, just, um, no, their Bible time starts this week. Tomorrow night at 6.30, we're expecting at least 78 or 9 children to be here who have pre-registered online. So we're praying for a number of about 90 tomorrow night. So if you could pray uh, with us for that. If you have any prizes at all, please get them up to the church uh, by tomorrow so we can start organizing that better. And we're going to start setting up for that uh, galactic trade, as we're calling it, in the large gym, which will be after our Thursday night service. Um, so please come out and be involved in Bible time. There is a, a workers meeting right after um, so if you have pictures and you're in Bible time um, and, you, and you're signed up for directory pictures, go get your picture taken and then help head back to the chapel so we can do a brief meeting. We're legally required to tell you all the things and ins and outs of what you can and cannot do when dealing with a child that's not your own. So please help us out with uh, being there. If you are working, you've already signed an agreement and we already have a background check. We just have to verbally tell you what to, not to do and not to do. So um, junior camp is also July 30th through August 2nd. We're going to be leaving Sunday after the morning service. Service and returning Friday. YouthCon is August 1st through 4th. The deadline to sign up is passed, but Brother Josh has some details on that if you're going. Um, so see him and really Miss Tara. She tells us all what to do. So, and then uh, Miss, I'm, I keep saying that, but it's still true. So the, the Ladies <laughs> Fellowship is in August, on August 19th. And so ladies sign up for that. There is a sign up sheet out on the ministry desk. Cla call to the ministry class meets every Sunday at 5 p.m for next week and the 30th. So if you're, uh, you uh, have a child that's interested in learning more about what ministry is, what Bible college is, we're doing that this month. So I think that's it. I do want to have Brother Isaac Ortiz come up here. This was the last time that he was scheduled as a singer on the schedule until he leaves us. So I'll let him give a testimony. I just, I appreciate Brother Isaac so much. Um, you tell us where, you know, you're going to end up going um, uh, to do your work. And he's already promised he's going to be back to play the tuba for the Christmas cantata because he's not going that far away. But we're certainly going to miss having him around. He's been a huge blessing. Uh, I am not bitter that he's leaving, but we do have an opening. If anybody once feels like the Lord is calling them to play the tuba, or the trombone, uh, we need that now of all times. So if you have any, you know, desire to do that, 
this guy, ha have him teach you before he's gone for good. So, Brother Isaac, you just, you know, uh, tell us where the Lord's called you and then dismiss us in a word of prayer, if you would. Thank you. Well, if somebody's going to try and fill in my shoes, um, good luck. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. i got to stay humble. i got to stay humble. Um, I've been praying very much, trying to find a job and uh, be able to give my skills to the children of the future and been praying to God, like, just please, I, I want a place that I can, you know, be close to home and be able to not travel too far away. I had many opportunities to pick several places. I even had one offer in Tyler, but just couldn't do it because of distance. And eventually God was like, I got a spot right here in Hale Center, and it's an assistant director position. You'll be in charge of all this beautiful stuff here in one tiny little town. Uh, so I got the interview signed up, and I got that job that same day. And God bless. I was very happy and very just emotional and very thankful that he was able to answer my prayers and provide me with uh, a job that already feels like I'm already a part of the environment, I already feel like I'm a part of the uh, community there, because I've already been down there and talking to the head director, talking to some of the community members there. They had their 4th of July celebration that they invited me to, and the students that were a part of the parade, they, they were just like, oh, Mr. Ortiz, man, this dude is awesome. I can relate to him. So I'm very grateful for that. But do not worry. At some point, I'll probably bring the tuba and just play along with you guys. Don't worry. It's not going away for, you know, 12,000 years. So <laughs> I'm very grateful. And I'll definitely still be around. So don't worry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for the message that has been received. And Lord, I just... I'm very thankful for the uh, family that has been bestowed upon me through this church, Lord. I thank you so much for uh, everything that they have done to not just provide me with uh, a great uh, opportunity to learn through your word, uh, but also be able to uh, give, uh, be able to learn not uh, from your word and from themselves as well, Lord. Uh, I thank you for uh, just, again, giving me an awesome family, Lord. And I just thank you so much for all the lives that uh, that we've touched and all the lives that we'll continue to touch through your word, Lord. And we pray that you will just be with this week, Lord, as we come up to ARBT. Pray that you will, uh, pray that you will save, uh, that you'll have so many children come to know you as their Lord and Savior, Father. And uh, just pray that you will even gain some new church members in your house, Lord. And once again, Father, I thank you for uh, this amazing family, Father, and just pray that you will be with this church, Lord, throughout the many years to come, and just pray that you will keep it, everybody here under its protection, Lord, keep that protective hedge around them, and have them continue to spread the gospel to each and every single lost soul, Lord. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.